This review contains spoilers for the game Hollow Knight. Starting this review, I'll give Hollow Knight my honest score of 10. I think Hollow Knight deserves a score of 9.5 out of 10. I really couldn't find a single complaint about the game in my playthrough besides a small nitpick and a glitch which can cost around an hour of gameplay. Hollow Knight is a Metroidvania created by the Australian developers Team Cherry. Team Cherry is also responsible for the game Hungry Knight, which was disliked among the gaming community. Team Cherry claimed the title as a successful development team with the release of Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is a game set in a dying bug kingdom named Hollow Nest. One thing Hollow Knight does well is create a feeling of despair that haunts the player throughout their quest. This depressing feeling is due to the color scheme used for many of the biomes consisting of dark blue and gray, and the subtle soundtrack played throughout the game complements this feeling. This brings me to my first point of why I think this game deserves such a high score, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is what blends all biomes together and provides the main drive to complete the game. Throughout the story, Hollow Nest becomes increasingly depressing, and the only way to fix it is to complete the game. For example, partly through the game, the caverns below the main city is infested with the deadly plague that grows off the husks that wander the depths. The plague infects a secondary character which the player has some connection to. The, pe the player can really experience the aura of depression presented throughout the game. Even with the occasional quirky character that the player meets, the game has a way of suppressing their cheerful nature. This despair holds a beauty presented in the breathtaking locations and fights. For example, the Soul Master boss fight is a quick fight that keeps the player on their toes at all times, but has the same feeling that is presented throughout the game. Over the upbeat music, common grunts, and spells casted by the Soul Master, sounds of rain can be heard, which plays into the depressing atmosphere of the game. This specific example plays in my next point, which is the creative boss fights and their designs. Bosses are the main focus of the game. The player is tasked with hunting down three different beings that seal away the final boss. These three beings are located behind bosses. Fighting the bosses in this game was one of the best times I've had in my gaming career. They have so much thought put into them and it shows. One of the most memorable bosses in this game is also a main character who choose to pursue their questline like I did. This boss, Hornet, was very challenging for me and the reason why I took a short break from this game. Hornet is a fast boss that hits like a truck, but these challenges make the boss that much more memorable. This boss isn't necessarily the best boss in the game, nor is it my favorite, because every boss is so much fun to fight, and the boss fights are all worthwhile due to the rewards they present you with once you complete them, which brings me to my next point, the abilities. Abilities are given to the player once they either complete a boss fight or stumble upon them in their exploration. These abilities consist of a dash, a wall climb, a double jump, a dash that can cross entire areas, a warp, and an immunity to toxic waters. These abilities are different from spells, which cost soul to cast. Soul, of course, being the magic part of this game. These spells are given to the player by completing side quests or defeating select bosses. The spells consist of a simple projectile, an upward attack that covers a higher attack area than the traditional nail, a ground pound that can potentially open secret areas, and a simple healing spell. Almost every spell slash ability opens up the map and provides the player with a wider area to explore and a new way to traverse the map. The way Team Cherry integrates progression with beating bosses is simple but very creative. Even though every Metroidvania does the same thing, Hollow Knight does it with their own charm. These abilities are also crucial to boss fights since they help you so much throughout every fight. These abilities synergize perfectly with the high speed combat this game provides. Which brings me to my next point, combat. The combat presented in Hollow Knight is simple yet satisfying. The, cam the combat in Hollow Knight is perfectly matched with the pace and progression of the game. The combat evolves with the player throughout the game. The player can upgrade themselves with the use of charms. Charms spice up the gameplay by allowing the player to upgrade themselves and create builds to suit their playstyle and counter tricky boss fights. Charms allow immense replayability seeing how you can change your combat style whenever you choose. 
Even though I have little to say about the combat, it is always refreshing when you connect a hit after being punished by an enemy. The combat and abilities all revolve around the main aspect of the game, the platforming. Platforming is the main aspect of the game and it's perfectly executed. Every time I slipped up on a jump, I always knew it was my fault. The platforming is simple and reliable. Platforming evolves alongside the player's new abilities. Each addition to the arsenal of abilities belong. The only complaint I have is the crystal heart item. The ability is meant to allow players to traverse flat and open areas effectively or allow the player to access areas that are locked across massive chasms, but it feels like somewhat lazy level design. I wish these open areas were replaced with platforming that depends on other abilities. Besides that, the synergies that the player can create with the open-ended platforming combat and abilities allow for some amazing level design. An example of this is the main entrance to the City of Tears. The City of Tears is the middle of the map that connects the majority of other areas. To gain access to the city, the player has to find one of the many city crests located around the map. When the player attains said crest, they will be tasked with an amazing platforming test. The test perfectly shows the highest potential on a platformer. The test consists of jumps and well-timed dashes that provide a challenging but fun experience. This amazingly crafted platforming experience is also matched with the occasional enemy that allows the player to refill their soul to heal up in case they fall into the pit below. The platforming is a way to get to secret areas and find new items that can be sold at the local shops. Which brings me to my last points, which I will condense into one point because they play so closely together. The map allows for exploration of an amazingly crafted world. Each level is carefully created and filled with rewards to find and traps to fall into if you get too comfortable. The items found in the world of Hollow Knight are perfectly dispersed throughout the map. The items add a fun addition that will attract fans to the collectathon genre. The player can exchange the items they find with a historian of Hollow Nest for a high profit of Geo, the game's currency. The historian provides the player with information about the ancient lore of Hollow Nest. The items in history tablets I thought Hollow Knight was one of the better games I've played in the last few years. This game was all, an all around great experience. I can't wait to play through the DLC since I've heard some great things about them. Once I play them I'll construct a review about them as well. For Team Cherry, if they continue this level of effort they will no doubt quickly become one of my favorite and most trusted developers. This game is a masterpiece, and I think everyone should at least give it a chance. For the final score, I give it a 9.5 out of 10, only for small issues like an obnoxious glitch that results in both hours and immersion lost, and small nitpicks like the Crystal Heart.